Welcome back everybody to Keenan K TV. In this video, I want to talk about the Anthony Joshua vs. Andy Ruiz fight, but mainly focus on why Anthony Joshua lost this fight. Going into this fight, it was no secret that Andy Ruiz was the biggest of underdogs going into it. Nobody really gave him a chance and everybody totally underlooked who he was fighting. Now stylistically, he never presented anything out of the ordinary for Anthony Joshua. He was a great inside fighter with tremendous hand speed. He was kind of comparable to Alexander Povetkin. But the difference with Povetkin and uh, Anthony Joshua is that Povetkin is already over the hill. He's already closing in on his career. He never truly had the hand speed of Andy Ruiz to begin with anyway. So for Alexander Povetkin to be able to get in on the inside and land some great shots while not having the same hand speed as Andy Ruiz, it shouldn't really have come as a surprise that Andy was going to be able to hit Anthony Joshua as much as he did. Now looking at this fight in summary and looking at what Andy Ruiz was able to do very well was be very calculated, very patient and just be opportunistic with the openings that he has created for himself. Immediately in the first round we saw that Andy Ruiz was able to parry away the jab, get in on the inside, put his head on Anthony Joshua's chest and then in that pocket throw fast combinations that simply Anthony Joshua could never ever compete with. And that was always one big problem with Anthony Joshua. He sometimes has a bit too much of a heart. When it comes to those certain little pocket exchanges, he would like to throw with you. And when he did, the faster fighter out of the two would normally get the better out of it. Now this all really stems from the early success that Anthony Joshua had in the pocket. He was able to drop Andy Ruiz in the pocket while being the bigger guy. So when it comes to Anthony Joshua, he always had tremendous inside fighting but against somebody who was a lot smaller than him. So for him to go in there and land a huge uppercut on Klitschko in the clinch or whether it was Joseph Parker who is somewhat about his size, that was pretty normal because in that short range, he's still able to swing his shots, generate power and connect his shots at somewhat full extension. But when it is somebody like Andy Ruiz who is a lot shorter, he most of the time caught Andy Ruiz at not even the full extension of his shots and that is why Andy Ruiz was able to stay in the inside, stay in the pocket as long as he did. And Andy Ruiz knowing this, he knew that at whatever point the fight may be in and if he can get himself in the position where he is in that little short clinch range, 30 boxing range, he will always get the better of Anthony Joshua. So what he does is he has to wait on Anthony Joshua to throw and then he has to throw with him. As he's throwing with him, him having the faster hand speed, that means he's going to be catching Anthony Joshua at least most of the time off guard. And Anthony Joshua has shown to have a somewhat of a suspect chin throughout the years. So for him to catch him flush on the chin, temple of the head, and also it being unexpected and it coming from a blind spot for Anthony Joshua, that had to multiply the damage that Anthony Joshua had to take. Now, one thing about Anthony Joshua, it has always been the fact that he was pretty good at recovering pretty quickly. Even if it was against Dillian White where he got hurt for the first time in his professional career, he was able to recover pretty quickly against Vladimir Klitschko. He was able to recover, I don't want to say quickly, but he was able to recover uh, in the following rounds. But the difference in this fight was that Andy Ruiz, he himself got dropped, but he got back up pretty quickly and he was just recovered right away. And in the round that he was able to knock Anthony Joshua down twice in the third round, Anthony Joshua had never really recovered fully. It was kind of the same thing against Vladimir Klitschko when Vladimir Klitschko dropped him for the first time. Anthony Joshua, he just looked flat, right? His, his, his feet were flat. He was plodding around. Head movement was something that Anthony Joshua never truly excelled at to begin with. So for him to get um, caught right on the temple of the head, right behind the ear above the ear those looping over the shoulder shots from Andy Ruiz it really didn't come as a surprise for me that Anthony Joshua was just going to be in harm's way in the pocket so when it, when it comes to Anthony Joshua trying to fight somebody of Andy Ruiz's size he cannot really move his head all that too much because then he's going to give away the height and reach advantage so the, the best thing that he can do is stick behind a jab and what happens when Andy Ruiz deals with the jab pretty well and gets in on you you cannot really do much else at that point you have to fight the fight that you have been given and that fight is a pretty risky fight it is a it is a really big firefight that Andy Ruiz seems to just get the better of him every single time because all the shots that Anthony and Joshua caught Andy Ruiz with, he saw most of them coming. But when it came to Andy Ruiz catching Anthony and Joshua, it seemed like Anthony and Joshua didn't really know when and how he got hit. And by the seventh round, Anthony and Joshua had pretty much gassed himself out. His the, the the sting in his shots were very much so depleted. And Andy Ruiz had just outlasted him, outsmarted him, and just fought the way better fight and was just a better man on that day. 
Now, where does Anthony Joshua go from here? To be honest, there is uh, a supposed rematch clause, so I believe there will be a rematch right away. But I don't really know if this going to, if that fight is going to be the best fight for Anthony Joshua to take, honestly, because. And Ruiz, it seems like he has the perfect style to defeat Anthony Joshua and he will probably do it again. However, Anthony Joshua showed great adaptation in the fight and he showed that sticking with a jab or elite hook was one of the few punches that really had a lot of success for him. Obviously, the inside uppercut and elite left hook, those were the shots that obviously dropped him. But the lead uppercut followed up by a hook that was a combination that got dealt with pretty quickly and if Andrew Ruiz can deal with that once again in the rematch I would have to believe that the fight will probably have similar scenarios but it will be a lot more less right it, it will be probably very few in between and I don't really believe the rematch will be fought at the same pace as this fight because this fight was pretty hectic it got nasty very quickly and I believe that Anthony Joshua he will probably be a lot smarter about everything he will not engage uh, as much in the clinch I think he will have to tie Andy Ruiz up, stall the fight, break his momentum, and just get his own groove back and then just piece by piece, use his jab, lead hook, break down Andy Ruiz. But Andy Ruiz, given he is very tough, very durable, great stamina, hand speed is always there. Always, um, always, he, he's also a very underrated puncher, in my opinion. He was able to get him quite often, he was able to catch him. And finishing a fighter like Anthony Joshua and continuously just finding a way to um, land flush, even after Anthony Joshua adapted to situations, that just speaks volumes of the veteran and skill um, that Andrew Ruiz possesses. So in the end, um, I would have to believe that Anthony Joshua, he should have a lot more success, but I don't really know if he can deal with Andy Ruiz's inside fighting but if he can stick behind a jab and keep him at a long range for him to pick him apart with then yeah obviously he can do it but I would have to assume that the rematch will be a lot more favorable for Anthony Joshua but for now this really just um showed that Andy Ruiz was just a better man on the day Anthony Joshua not ready for the fighter that Andy Ruiz was I don't think that there was any case of underestimating um, Ruiz by Anthony Joshua I think that Anthony Joshua truly realized what he was fighting who who he was going up against I would have to believe that the quote Code high and reach disadvantage is not really a disadvantage in a fight game. If you can use your tools or gifts that you have been given, for example, if Mike Tyson was what like six foot five, I don't think he would have been the same fighter because then he couldn't he couldn't have gone on the shots the way he did by being the five foot ten fighter that he is. And especially against somebody like Anthony Joshua, who's very big, if you can get on the inside and you've pretty much neutralized him, and as Andrew Ruiz was able to, that seemed to be the way to go. Now for Anthony Joshua to go in there and let's just say he beats Andrew Ruiz, gets his title back who should he be able to fight right i think by that point we were i think we we're gonna have anthony joshua probably fight again in october or december uh, we're gonna have deontay wilder go in there against Luis ortiz in september and the rematch with the fury seems to be done for early 2020 so probably by the summer next year if tyson fury can go in there and defeat deontay wilder i believe then that is a pretty good fight for us fans to have in england i would like to have this fight in england so i can you know um fly over and watch the fight um obviously if fury and aj win i mean they're both from the uk so this, it doesn't really make sense for that fight to take place in the us so personally i would like that fight to be in the uk but if wilder wins i don't really know i would have to think about where i would want that fight to be because if anthony joshua has all four belts he still is the a side of the of the of, of the negotiations so i would have to say that deontay wilder has to bend over to anthony joshua's will a little bit and probably fight in the uk but in the end only time will tell how everything will be playing out for now this has been the truth behind Anthony Joshua's loss. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What do you guys think is next for Anthony Joshua? And who do you guys think he will fight next? As always, I have been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off. Later. If you like what I do and want to see more, please consider contributing to my Patreon. Link is in the description below.